Well, thank you, Shez, uh, and to AWS for inviting me to be a part of this forum. Uh, I'm gonna be speaking about using machine learning uh, to mitigate risk from emerging infectious diseases. Now, this story actually goes back 17 years. Um, I was just beginning my career as an academic infectious disease physician in Toronto back in 2003, when this virus that nobody had ever seen or heard of before showed up in our city, uh, infected a number of frontline healthcare workers, as well as hundreds of different citizens, um, and really crippled our city for four very long months. Uh, that uh, virus was SARS-CoV, and uh, it really was the motivation for uh, all of the work I've been doing as a clinician and an academic, and more recently as an entrepreneur, in developing solutions to prevent or mitigate uh, the impacts of emerging infectious diseases. Now, one of the things we learned during the SARS outbreak was that you know, the world is rapidly changing and we're seeing dangerous outbreaks appear with greater frequency, scale, and impact. But the world is also changing in ways that can play to our advantage. We have growing access to big data, advanced analytics like machine learning and other forms of artificial intelligence, and digital technologies that can enable, enable us to disseminate knowledge and spread knowledge around the world faster than any outbreak uh, is able to spread. Now, in order to realize that vision, we need a global early warning system for infectious diseases. And this has really been foundational to the work that we have been doing at Blue Dot for the last seven years. So let me walk you through what some of the key pillars are of this early warning system. Now, first, uh, if we've learned one thing with COVID-19, it's that time really matters. And early detection of the threat is critical. This gives us the time to be able to intervene and ultimately to be able to change the course of an outbreak. The second issue is that outbreaks spread really quickly in our hyper-connected world. They can quickly jump across countries or even across continents and, and have an impact. The third pillar is really around disruption. Now, infectious diseases spread around the world all the time. I see them as a practicing clinician, where I see patients who've returned from different parts of the world with illnesses that they've acquired during their travels. Uh, but they don't all cause outbreaks, let alone trigger pandemics. And how can we anticipate which types of events might actually lead to further disruption and new outbreaks, and which ones uh, will not? And then ultimately, how can we minimize the impact of that disruption. And finally, we have to be able to disseminate these insights, get them into the hands of those who need them so they can take the appropriate uh, timely actions to protect themselves and to protect others. Now, these pillars have to be integrated. It's not enough for them to be sitting in isolation. We need to go from early detection to an assessment of dispersion and disruption, and then ultimately communicating that information uh, in a very timely manner. So I'm gonna say a little bit about our, the first pillar in early detection. And we've been using machine learning to enhance the detection of global threats around the world and to do this in near real time. Now, one of the things we learned during the SARS outbreak was that if we wait for official reports of outbreaks through government public health agencies, we may not always get that information in the most timely manner uh, as we would like. The internet has become an important medium for gathering information about possible outbreaks even before they're reported officially. This can be through the world's online media, through health blogs and other forums. Um, and our data scientists and data engineers and clinicians have been building a platform that is gathering information on over 150 different diseases and syndromes in 65 languages and collecting this information every 15 minutes, 24 hours a day. Now, that's obviously a lot of data to process, uh, and this is where natural language processing and machine learning comes into play. And we've been using NLP and machine learning, powered by AWS, to extract vital pieces of information, the name of the pathogen, the location and the time of the outbreak, and other contextual data, such as case counts or deaths and so forth. So what we're ultimately doing here is using these analytical tools to take vast amounts of unstructured text data and to organize and structure it into spatio-temporal data where we know the place and time and the name of the pathogen. Now we use this platform to pick up news of an outbreak of pneumonia in Wuhan back on the morning of December 31st by translating an article in Chinese and ultimately having the machine presented to our team 
as a threat that we should be paying attention to. Now, we also know that outbreaks can spread very quickly. There are billions of us that board commercial flights every single year, uh, and certainly we, we travel around the world with, with record speed. That's obviously less so today with COVID-19, but certainly at the time that COVID-19 was emerging, populations were moving rapidly across the planet. Our surveillance system is connected with data on the entire world's commercial air traffic. Uh, this includes information on all of the flight schedules as they are moving around the planet, as well as the anonymized final destinations of travelers around the world. So this image here shows you uh, in circles the final destinations of travelers leaving Wuhan uh, back at the end of 2019. Uh, you can see many of those large circles are in East Asia. And then you'll see these arcs, these lines that are the nonstop flights departing Wuhan to different places around the world. Some of them you'll see in Europe and places like Italy and France and the UK. But also, if we look further west into North America, you will see nonstop flights into San Francisco and into New York City. Now, we were sufficiently concerned about COVID-19, actually even before it had that name, back in early January. Uh, in fact, here you will see a publication that we submitted to the scientific literature uh, where it was referred to as a pneumonia of unknown etiology in Wuhan and looking at the potential for international dispersion through commercial air travel. Using these analytics, we identified the top 20 cities that we thought would be at greatest risk of impact if COVID-19 was, was to continue to spread and spread ultimately outside of mainland China. What you'll see here is in red dots, these cities were among the very first cities that were impacted by COVID-19. And Bangkok, you see at the top of the list, was in fact the very first city that reported a case of COVID-19 outside of mainland China. And so we published these results back on January 8th because ultimately what we wanted to do was to make sure that these data and analytics were available to the scientific and public health community to inform decisions and anticipate how this outbreak might spread. Now, as we think about the spread of COVID-19 into distant cities around the world, um, ultimately, one of the key public health interventions for slowing its spread is social distancing. Uh, and we've had the opportunity of working with the state of California in looking at social distancing interventions using anonymous data. I wanna underscore anonymous data that's aggregated uh, to understand population mobility. These are derived from mobile devices um, and ultimately are important and valuable intelligence so that public health officials can utilize their finite human resources in the most effective, efficient, and coordinated manner possible. Um, and so here is a visualization of some of the population mobility across Los Angeles over a 24-hour period. Now, another critical factor in the last D of the four Ds I described is dissemination. How do we get this information out to those who need it? Now, the typical time to awareness today is such that government public health agencies are the first to learn about this. This is actually very much in their job, uh, and they ultimately need to be looking at what threats are appearing, not only in their own countries, but elsewhere in the world. After government, the information tends to trickle down to the healthcare providers, and then finally to industry and ultimately to the public. This is not really an ideal way of disseminating information. What we really need is a mechanism for contempor contemporaneous dissemination of these insights so that the public health community has information about epidemic threats that are appearing around the world. And perhaps even some of the data and analytics that we're describing here uh, can supplement the existing capacity of the public health system. But it is critically important that these insights also make it to the frontline healthcare providers. Now, I say this as a practicing physician who finds myself in the emergency department seeing patients from around the world who come back with illnesses. The difference between one case of an illness in a traveler and an outbreak that can cripple the city is an astute clinician. And, and this is so critical because sick patients don't go to the public health department. They wind up in the emergency department. And this is a very, very important piece of how we need to be empowering the frontline healthcare workers so they can better protect themselves and better protect the rest of us. And finally, when we think about global businesses and enterprises, 
they all have a responsibility to take care of their employees, their most valuable assets. For some businesses, taking care of their customers and all businesses really to be thinking about disruptions in business continuity and supply chains that can really impact the financial resilience of their organizations. So as we look past this COVID-19 crisis and think about how do we prevent some of the health and economic and social consequences of an outbreak like COVID-19, it's to be using big data and analytics to be able to detect outbreaks around the world quickly, to anticipate how they may be able to spread, to anticipate what their impacts and consequences may be, and ultimately then to disseminate insights to empower the whole of society uh, so that we can mitigate the consequences that we have been seeing with COVID-19, the severe health and economic and social impacts uh, of a dangerous infectious disease. So with that note, I'd like to thank you, uh, Shez and AWS for inviting me to be a part of this forum. And, and Shez, I'll, I'll turn it back over to you now.